Welcome to the Lemonade Car Show, brought to you by Omvik and Crown. I'm your host, Lorraine Sommerfeld. I'm joined today by Debbie Arnold with Sound Insurance and Ron Corbett. He's the head writer for the APA, that's the Automobile Protection Association. Welcome both of you to the show. Thank okay, you. great to be here. We are going to talk a little bit about what the APA does for consumers, and we're going to focus it on insurance because it's a huge topic, and I'm mm. glad you joined us again for this. So, Ron, the APA, people can call in and find out. They can get help buying a new car, buying a used car, locating a mechanic, resolving problems with manufacturers that they might have, but they can also find out this whole other tab, which is insurance. Indeed. That's not an answer. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of our big things is we have the new car buying service, which is really good. If you're looking for a new car, you can just phone us up or, or email us. You can get a full negotiated price on a new car, no nuance, no smoke, no mirrors. Get a super professional salesperson who will, who's already agreed to that price. You call them up and you say, okay, I want X, and they'll say, okay, next Wednesday, and it's done. And also, uh, in, in Debbie's case, uh, she works for a brokerage that we've been dealing with for a long time. And if members want to get a, a really good quote on an insurance uh, insurance policy using group rates, because that's what Debbie does, she, she has group affiliations that she's dealing with with various insurance companies. They can phone her up. They can give her all the details. She'll work at a really, really competitive rate. And, um, you know, they have the option to take it or not. So, Debbie, when you're buying a new car, is that a good time to shop your insurance if you don't have a bunch of speeding tickets? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have tickets, if you don't have accidents in the last six years, yes, it's a good time. What I find with the APA members specifically is they're very, very savvy shoppers when it comes to car buying. So they research the vehicles that they're going to. So oftentimes, and I, and I truly do not mind doing this for, for any client, is uh, they'll choose three or four vehicles that they're looking at and they'll get quotes on them. And that's really important because a lot of people have sticker shock when it comes to the insurance piece. They've picked this vehicle, they haven't uh, researched the pricing insurance-wise, yeah. and then they could be shocked that it's as expensive as what it is. There could be, yeah, there could be some shocking differences exactly. if you're looking at four cars in the same segment with virtually the same price. Some could be considerably more expensive to insure than, uh, than another one. So that could also be a purchase decision. You say, okay, I'm gonna buy car X, it's gonna cost me two grand. Car Y is going to cost me like twelve fifty. Well, I'm going to take the one that's twelve fifty. So you usually don't see that much <laughs> <That's> like, <no. laughs> disparity. There, there can be but a, a Ron's dis making a point. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, there yeah. can yeah. be. Yeah. The, so. yeah, if there's that much of a disparity, the, I, it'd be a different class of vehicle. But it, saying it that, it, it, it can be part you know, part of the yeah. the decision as to what to purchase because if something is going to cost you more. Uh, uh, you know, per year over a long haul, well, you'll say, okay, the the, the all-in cost for this car will be less than the other one. Okay, it's a, it's right. an urban myth that red cars cost more to insure yes. and things like that. People really sink their teeth into some of those. I know, it's interesting. I, I, I get, because I get the emails, well, the car I'm picking is red, and it, it doesn't matter. But there are differences, which a lot of people are surprised to find out, which is between their older car and, and a newer new car. car. Yeah. Newer cars typically are cheaper to insure per capita than in the older car, and that's basically because of the safety features. Mm -hmm. So, and people oftentimes think that the value of the vehicle has such a big impact yeah. on the premium or the insurance pricing, and it doesn't. Um, quite frankly, a Porsche is probably cheaper to insure than a Chevy Cruze. Wouldn't you rather have the Porsche? No. Yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> oh no, and you from, wouldn't like the cruise. <laughs> and, I mean, it could be any of the luxury vehicles typically yeah. are less expensive, and that's just a reflection it, on the loss ratios. Well, well, yeah. Well, and also the the as Debbie said, the extra safety stuff, okay. the accident with benefits portion of the policy is a significant significant portion of the policy. It, it generates a lot of the policy dollars. And with cars becoming increasingly safe, people are, are sustaining fewer and fewer injuries. And so, so sometimes when people get trade an older car for a new one, they're really surprised that, that the rate didn't really go up because the accident benefits portion of the policy has dropped considerably. Yeah. What we will start seeing though is the physical damage portion, collision and comprehensive, which has over the last 20 years has actually dropped quite a bit significantly over the liability and accident benefits. We are going to see that starting to creep up because the newer vehicles are more expensive to repair. More expensive to repair. 
more complicated to repair to with the computer chips and the sensors and you know how sensitive they are and with the, the damage airbags. Is hidden. It's frequently exactly. hidden, so you don't know. And, and that's another problem when we come into in Ontario. There's a two thousand dollar minimum guideline. For, yeah, who gets to decide? By the yes. side of the road, you're staring at it, going. Or you bring it into know. the collision reporting center, and the officer says it's not two thousand dollars; it's only fifteen hundred. Yeah. I had a Mercedes go in. Officer said it's under two thousand dollars, and it's fifteen thousand dollars worth of yeah. damage. So you have to be very careful with that. But I will say, I suspect that our collision and comprehensive premiums are going to start creeping up there. Well, the other thing we're finding too is that cars are more readily written off by mm -hmm. insurance companies because the damage, even if you can't see it, if all the airbags have gone off. Oh. Typically, if airbags have deployed, it's a write-off. 2000 bucks okay. a pop, it's a disposable car now. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a dual-edged sword. More safety features, but once they're blown or compromised, it's not worth fixing exactly. the car. Exactly. So. And that's something from an insurance standpoint we should bring up as well is when you're purchasing the new vehicle, make sure that your insurer is supplying limited, at least limited waiver of depreciation. There okay. is another product out there. Yeah, which you're going to tell me about right when we come back. Yeah. More lemonade coming up. Welcome back to the Lemonade Car Show, brought to you by Omvik and Crown. I'm your host, Lorraine Sommerfau. We're speaking with Debbie Arnold from Sound Insurance Services and Ron Corbett from the APA. Ten points to you. It happens. Sometimes I forget your name, even though I've seen your smiling face for all these years Thank now. You, okay, Debbie, before you're so rudely interrupted. That's okay. By Ron. What were you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> so we were talking about when you purchase a new vehicle, there's the option for limited waiver of depreciation. Have at least that. APA members, the group program is specifically underwritten by Aviva Traders. Um, they're giving the discount and they have a, an amazing coverage. It's a replacement cost endorsement. Not very many companies offer this and it's very different from the limited waiver of depreciation. So what it gives you is for five years, they're going to replace the vehicle. If your vehicle is totally written off, 2018 Toyota Camry is completely written off and it's 2021, you're getting a 2021. It's not predicated on the values as much as it is you're getting a brand new vehicle of that year. If and most of them are only good for a year or two years. So usually five years 24 is a months, deal. 24 yeah. months to 30 months. The difference with that endorsement is that the premium for it will increase year over year. Okay. So by the fifth year, you might be paying $300 for that endorsement. But by the fifth year, you have a five year old vehicle that you're going to get a current model year total if it's total. Exactly. Wow. So it's, a, it's an excellent endorsement. It is only offered by very few insurance companies. What are they calling that? The re it's a replacement cost endorsement. It may be uh, differently labeled from company to company, yeah. but if you're talking to your insurance agent or broker, you should ask if that's available. Do not mistake that for gap insurance. That doesn't exist in Ontario, um, but it is a, replace a true replacement cost endorsement. I, I think people insurance can get very wordy like, yes. and you can and there's been a lot of changes in the yes. past two years which you have to be aware of as well what I like is talking to you which I do all the time you're a broker so I can ask yes. you anything yes it's almost like um, being it's time out yes. okay this doesn't go on the record no of whereas course. if you call your if I call an insurance company especially my own and go what would happen if they're already typing yeah, in exactly. this has happened <laughs> So don't this call your insurance wild. companies and say, do I have to report it if I scuff the garage wall? Don't, because they're writing down that you did exactly. that. But and and that's, the, that's the other advantage of being broker. an APA member yeah. and, and dealing with sound insurance is that any of the APA members or potential members can call us and ask for that type of advice. You have a discreet chat. Exactly. Discreet and, I'm, and I'm happy to do that for anybody, yeah. you know, the, yeah. because insurance is complicated in Ontario. It is complicated across the country. So if you need to speak to somebody, um, and if I don't know the answer, I'm going to find out. Because I get asked a lot, um, especially this, when the snow's on the ground and, there's, and everyone's just yes. smucking up against each other. you got a thousand bucks on each side just on the paint. And they're going, do I have to tell my insurance about it? And I'm like, tell 
Yes, because if the other side says we won't and they do, then you're yeah, yeah, in yeah. double trouble. Yeah. Exactly. It depends how it's reported to. With the minor collision or minor accident guideline now, if the at fault party pays for all the damages, all the damages are under two thousand dollars and there's no injuries whatsoever, then that can't go against you. So you do, you still want to have a conversation. You want to make sure that you get a waiver signed by the third party if you're paying for their damages to make sure because they could sue for injuries two years less a day, right? And we have those situations I've seen that all the time. The day before, uh, from yeah. the kids, yeah. the day before. Yeah, and and that's and that's a problem. And if the insurance company doesn't know anything about it, you've prejudiced the insurance company's position from being able to investigate at the time of the loss. So they still need to be notified, but there's a way to be notified, you know. And, and that, being a broker, we're going to be able to word it in such a way that it's not going to go on record, They're, and we're going to make sure that they don't charge you for it if you've followed all those steps. See, that's why when when something like that happens and someone is standing there saying to you in the middle of the street, "Oh, no, we can't do this," just take a deep breath and say, "Give me your phone number." Go home and collect yeah. myself because you're a little you're agitated. Oh, like, you're, yeah, you yeah. are, but you want to make sure that you do collect the information at the scene, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's really important. Just don't make any promises. No, don't, no, never just, admit liability. Never admit that you yeah. were at fault. Don't you let know? anyone else off the hook. No, how to do, have a conversation. I think most importantly, uh, and this really bothers me driving the GTA as much as I do, is you know those little fender benders and leaving them in the middle of the road until the cops come. Yeah, they're not coming. Anymore. No. Okay. No, no. Pull the cars off the road. Yeah, you're, if you have independent witnesses for the accident, take yeah. down their names and telephone numbers. Everybody has a phone. Exactly. Make right sure yeah, that you it, get their insurance really is, information. It really is easy, right? Yeah. You and just cops take don't a want photocopy. You on the and, exactly. And, you can take you snap pictures on your phone, yeah. and that's good enough. And this will surprise people, but the congestion is really bad in this area. So get the cars yeah, exactly. off. Exactly. Get the, the car. And uh, quite frankly, getting the cars off the road is a safety issue as well. Yeah. When you're standing in the middle of the road having an argument with whoever you've had the Lively collision with, traffic. it. You, you know what? It. You could get hurt. You can get hurt. Let's be safe, cars. get off the road, and, yeah. and deal with it then. And if, as long as nobody's injured, that's the big thing. That's the big thing. If, there's an, if there's any sign of an injury, you need to call the authorities right away. Sound advice from Debbie Arnold of <laughs> Sound Insurance Services. Thank you, Ron Corbett. We'll be back with more Lemonade. Welcome to the Lemonade Car Show. This edition, we're coming to you from the Canadian International Auto Show in Toronto. We'll be taking a look at the new Ford Ranger, the VW Arteon, the Chevy Silverado, as well as the Mitsubishi Eclipse, which is all new. And this little red Corvette, it's not mine, but I wish it was. with Doug Kenzie, Chevrolet truck brand manager. Doug, this truck is replacing one that was out for five years. What are the major changes? Well, the main changes are we're introducing the all-new 2019 Silverado. It's going to have eight unique trim levels. Uh, the new truck is 450 pounds lighter. We've made every aspect of this truck bigger. It's got a, a longer wheelbase, bigger cab, and then in the bed, we've made tons of improvements in the bed. We've, uh, we've uh, been able to through a new manufacturing process, increase the width of the bed by over seven inches. You mentioned lightweighting. Ford went to a lot, of a lot of aluminum. Are you doing that with the Silverado, or what ways have you lightened it up? Well, we've used a strategic strategy of using a mixed materials. So we use aluminum and we use high strength steel. Uh, all of the swing panels are aluminum, so that includes the doors, the hood, and the tailgate. That helps with uh, ease of use and with mass reduction. Uh, but then the key, the fixed components, uh, the fenders, the cab, and the uh, bed are all made of steel, high-strength steel. The cylinder shutdown is a very sophisticated uh, operation for 19. How is that impacting the fuel economy? 
But this, you know, we've uh, helped pioneer that technology and we're taking it even a step further. Uh, we're introducing dynamic fuel management on our 5.3 liter and our 6.2 liter V8s. And uh, what that does is it's going to allow the cylinders to operate in anywhere from one to seven cylinder, one to seven cylinders and deactivate them based on need and demand. So that's going to offer significant power when you need it or uh, significant fuel savings when the truck is not under load. You're introducing this in a diesel in a inline six, which is a far more traditional configuration. How did you arrive at that? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, we're excited about introducing a diesel in a light duty. Uh, we are going to have our three liter inline uh, Duramax diesel uh, when we launch this truck. Um, the inline configuration is just more in tune with a, a smoother uh, configuration that will allow for uh, smooth power and allow for more torque as well. These pickups are definitely pushing up into the higher premium areas. A lot of people are using them as family vehicles. Do you see the cost of fuel impacting that for people who aren't writing it off? Well, you know, uh, obviously with a truck, um, the price of fuel is important, uh, but as some of the technology we've talked about between the dynamic fuel management, between uh, the diesel offering, between the 450 pounds of weight savings, those trucks are becoming far more efficient in fuel, and that's what's making the difference for uh, many consumers as they purchase trucks. Thanks so much, Doug. Can't wait to see the new Silverado on the road. All right, thank you very much. I'm here with Thomas Tesla with Volkswagen Canada. Welcome, yeah. Thomas. Where do you see the Arteon fitting into Volkswagen's lineup? Well, this is pretty easy, actually. This is our brand new flagship for the brand. This is above the Passat. This is your executive class cruiser. It's got all the latest technology. It's got all the latest gadgetry that people are looking for, the connectivity, of course, the driver's aids and such. But what sets it apart from Passat is probably the level of elegance that's in this car. There really is a fine detail in the Arteon. What's the price point of the Arteon? Price point, we are going to be launching this car in the fourth quarter of this year. It's going to be priced from under 48000 but it's only going to come one way, and that is completely loaded. We'll have a couple of options on it. One's like a body kit with bigger wheels that some people like to have, and then we'll have a technology package. But you'll be able to get into this car fully loaded for under 48. Engine and transmission configurations, what's going to be available? One engine, one transmission. That makes it, very easy. it makes it very easy to pick, I'll tell you. It's the engine out of our Golf R, which is a turbocharged two liter, and it's driven through an eight speed transmission to all four wheels via, via our four motion all wheel drive. Where is it going to be made? It's going to be made in our plant in Emden, Germany. Okay. One plant worldwide, so we're supplying the entire global market with this car. So we've got our fingers crossed that we get as many as we want. Now who's going to be buying this car? I hope a lot of people. This is a car that I guess the business person is going to look at and what she or he looks for in a car is probably going to be style. During our presentation this morning we said it's got all the technology, it's got the get up and go, it's got the all wheel drive, it, we've ticked all the boxes for the things that Canadians look for. But the intangible we think it has is it's got a unique look. It's a lift back, as you can see, so it's really got great utility, but it looks like an elegant town car, like something that you will show up at the club at or at work or whatever, and people will say, hey, what's that? Thomas, thank you so much. Thank you, Lorraine. Thomas Tesla with Volkswagen Canada and the new Arteon. Don Almer, Mitsubishi Motor Sales of Canada. We're here with the new Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. New to your lineup, what's the platform under this, an existing one? It, it is built on an existing platform, which is utilized for uh, other products as well. Where do you see this fitting in with the RVR and the Outlander? The way we've positioned this vehicle, uh, we expect it to be a truly unique customer. Uh, basically, uh, the focus is on design, uh, technology, connectivity, and what we've seen from focus groups that we've actually had is that it's a truly unique customer from our current RVR or Outlander customer. Uh, this customer is a much more focused on uh, design, uh, 
as, as mentioned, connectivity is, is important to this, this customer. So standard equipment on the Eclipse Cross, we have our smartphone link display audio system, which includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So they're able to connect their phone. You can do text to speech, speech to text, and you know, make phone calls, take phone calls, all that kind of stuff. So it, it, we see it as being a truly unique customer, and it's just going to bring uh, a new customer into our, our dealerships. These Conquest sales, which brands do you think you're going to be pulling these sales from? Well, we, we expect them to come from uh, other sporty uh, compact SUV uh, competitors, uh, but we also expect a lot of them to come from our uh, current Lancer customers because there's a lot of similarity between uh, this vehicle in terms of uh, performance, handling, uh, equipment, um, the, uh, the connectivity aspect of it. Uh, that's what these kind of customers are looking for, like Lancer customers that we currently have. So we have an expectation, uh, particularly from Lancer uh, AWC, our four-wheel drive version of the vehicle, uh, that would move up to this vehicle as their lifestyle changes. The 1.5 liter turbo that's in this, this beautiful car, are you going to be introducing any other engines with it? Uh, no, th this, this the is the best match for this vehicle. Uh, it is tuned specifically for the Eclipse Cross. This is the first uh, vehicle to uh, feature the new 1.5 liter turbo. Thanks so much, Don. Good luck with the Eclipse. Eclipse Thank you. Cross. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. I'm here with Mike Sanudis, truck product manager with Ford Canada. Hi, Mike. 2011, the, rain, the Ranger disappeared and now it's back. Well, really there's a segment need. Uh, the segments uh, increased quite a bit in the US, but in Canada it's actually more than doubled. So it's really created a, a need in Canada to have this truck in there. Our customers have been asking for it for a long time and uh, we really felt that now was the time to bring it back to Canada. Now this Ranger is a lot bigger than the previous Rangers. How come? There are a few similarities. Um, every, product, or every program is different, so we really used a mixed material approach just to develop uh, a lot of efficiencies in the, in the vehicle. Um, so the hood, the tailgate, the fenders are aluminum. Uh, the rest of the body is steel. How many powertrains will be offered with the new Ranger? So we're going to have one powertrain in this one. So we think we're bringing the best of both worlds. We're going to have a 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine uh, paired to a 10-speed transmission. So the 2.3 EcoBoost we actually have in the Mustang today. It's a great engine. Um, it's really torquey, so you'll get that low-end torque that a truck customer really needs, especially if they're towing or going off-road, really at, getting that torque at the low end to uh, climb over rocks and such. So we think it's the perfect engine for this truck. Who's the customer base for this truck? Who's going to be buying it? Well, we've got a lot of customers who live in urban environments that really the F-150 is a little too big for their environment, but they still like going out of town and doing adventures and things like that. So we think this truck really gives them that maneuverability. Um, especially in off-road. Uh, a lot of off-road customers require or they really like the smaller footprint so they can maneuver off-road quite a bit better. Do you see sales are going to be cannibalized or Conquest sales from other brands? <laughs> um, we think it's going to be a lot of Conquest. Well, not so much Conquest. We think it's, there's a lot of entry-level um, demand there. Um, so it'll be at that price point where an entry-level customer that may not be able to afford an F-150 um, can really kind of join the built Ford tough truck truck family, if you will. Thanks so much, Mike. We look forward to seeing the Ranger on the road. My pleasure. I'd like to thank all my guests and thank Crown and Omnic for a great sponsorship. Lemonade Car Show.